Mary Smith. How long does it take one of your police cars to answer an emergency call? Well, on a call like I just made, the police car be there now. But that's only about half a minute. It's all it takes. Not long ago, I broadcast a holdup of a gasoline station, and the radio car arrived for 30 seconds. The officers caught the burglar back and out of the station. Mm, that's pretty fast. According to the records, Los Angeles police cars using Rio Grande cracked gasoline take only an average of two and a half minutes to answer any emergency call. That's right. We're making new speed records every day. Recently, officers arrived at a bank in 65 seconds after an alarm was given and caught the bandits in the act of robbing the bank. Rio Grande cracked gasoline deserves much of the credit for speeding up our emergency cars. Rio Grande cracked gasoline has something that you can't get in any other gasoline in this market. It's the only gasoline you can buy that's made by the famous Sinclair cracking process. Sinclair refining engineers have spent millions of dollars and years of research in perfecting this process. Rio Grande's new refinery is one of the finest cracking plants in America. Uh, what does cracking mean? Well, many gasolines are so slow and sluggish that they do not burn completely, causing decided power losses. Rio Grande's cracking process breaks up the gasoline into tiny, lively molecules that are easily vaporized, easily ignited, and completely burned. All the energy can be used. That's why there's more power in every drop. That's why more police cars use Rio Grande cracks than any other brand wherever it is sold. And that's why every motorist who will try Rio Grande cracked gasoline will get the thrill of police car performance in his own car. Once more, it is our pleasure to present Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. We all have heard the sentimental talk, such as is uttered in great volumes at this graduation time of the year about youth and its opportunities. Much of what is said, most of it, in fact, is sincere. But too often, the young man or young woman, believing literally that the world is theirs, faces bitter disappointment when he goes forth from his college or school walls to face reality. Yet youth must be served. The training of our youth is a serious challenge to the older generation. Parents cannot pass this responsibility on to the schools. It lies squarely in the first instance at home. The boy or girl who has had unfavorable home environment and unsympathetic treatment from those he should love and respect is a boy or girl who has already traveled a long way along the road to delinquency and crime. Our story tonight tells of three such youths all of them of high school age. They didn't have the right sort of surroundings. They tried to beat the game. How quickly and how completely they lost, you will soon learn. It is an evening in last March in a pool hall in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Anybody seen Jack Parker around? Uh, yes, Hugs. He's in the back room. Oh, thanks. Hey, Jack. Wait a minute. Oh, Doug, what's on your mind? Well, I did it. Did what? Left home? Yeah? Sure. I get sick and tired of the whole outfit. Gee. Well, you want to come along? Where are you going? On to the coast, I guess. How? Saw a good-looking Buick parked in the lot behind the market. Yeah? Yeah, and I got that 45 I stole. Well, do you think you can get away with it? Sure. Pretty boy Floyd did, didn't he? Yeah, but they got him time. Yeah, right? well, that's because he made mistakes. I won't make it. Come on, why don't you come with me? You got a blackjack? Well, yeah, but how about my ma? Oh, forget your ma. She done anything for you but try to make you go to work? The heck with parents. Well, yeah, but... Yeah, they never understand you. They always treat you like kids. Listen, we're growing up, Jack. You and I can blast our way through anything. Well, what do you say? Well, okay. All right. Let's lift that joint. Well, that was a cinch, wasn't it? 
wasn't it, Bell? Sure was. You know, people that leave the keys in their car deserve to have them stolen. That's right. By the time that guy gets his report into the cops, we'll be across the line and into Texas. Say, what's that town on ahead? Oh, it ought to be Bristol. How much money you got? Eighty-five cents. Well, I got half a buck. How's the gas? In just a minute, what's so see. It's almost full. Well. Hey, look, there's a kid flagging a ride. Let's take him on. Huh? Okay. Slow down. Maybe we can use him. Hey, pal, how about a lift? Sure, I've been. Where you going? Oh, just traveling. Where you going? Hmm, just traveling. Yeah. Coast, maybe. Where are you from? McAllister. That's too close to the state can. I, I thought I'd get a little farther away. Go to beef? No, but you never can tell. Hey, you got any dough on you? couple of bucks. Well, you want to string along with us? How do you mean? We got a 45 and a blackjack and guts. You got any guts? Landy. That's swell. I'm Suggs Kelly and this is Jack Parker. Glad to meet you. My name's Otis Byers. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you, Otis. How old are you? 16. You ever pulled any jobs? Oh, sure. I've been snatching purses since I was 12. Started young, didn't you? I mean real jobs. Oh, I pulled 30 burglaries in Tulsa before I left. Yeah? Sure, didn't I, Jack? That's right. You're a real hard guy to start telling me. A few hours later, the adolescent bad men roll into Oklahoma City. At a traffic intersection, they are stopped. By the red light. Hey, don't move like it's back, will you? Where are you going, Sug? You see that guy standing waiting for the light to change? Well, he's going to contribute. There's a stick up, mister. What? You heard me. You see this gap? Well, turn around and get in that car and keep your trash shut. Oh, uh, move and be quick about it. But listen here. Button up your mouth. Okay, Jack, take it away. All right, mister. Fork over your dough. I have much on All right, let's have everything you have got. Frisky motors. Okay. Here's all I can find. Well, I'll see. Only two bucks. Say, I ought to bump you off. Well, I told you I'll have a little bit. Will you let us go now? Yeah, and give you a chance to turn us in? I should say not. You're riding with us for a ways. But I gotta be home. What does my wife say? What do I care? Okay, Jack, we're past the city limits. Good and dark in here. Right. Slow down. All right, open that door, Otis. Hey, what are you going to do? This is your station. Get out. Well, slow down, please. I can't. I'm sorry we're in a hurry. Well, Jump. Well, I'm afraid. Shove him, Otis. No, no, no. Go on. Scram. Oh. Okay, Jack. Let's go. A lot of trouble for two bucks, but we'll be, we'll be doing better in El Paso. What do you mean? Gas stations. Next evening at a gas station in El Paso, Texas. Yes, sir. How many? Fill her up. Yes, sir. That's a pretty lonely spot you got out of here, isn't it? Yeah, it's all out of town. Have many figures? Never had one. Ain't you afraid? Me? Oh, no. Why should I be afraid? Well, here's why. Well... Uh, put away that gun, please. Put it away. Hey, don't spill that gas. Finish filling that tank. Otis, go through this cash register. Okay. Uh, don't shoot that thing, please. Oh, don't worry. I won't. Just keep your mind on that pump. Yes, sir. Stay out. Pull up. That's 12. How about Otis? You got the dough? Yeah. Okay, Jack. Let's go. Uh, uh, hello, hello, operator. Give me the police department. Yeah, hey, yeah, I've been robbed. Here you are, El Paso police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Hold up at the gasoline station at City Road and Santa Fe Avenue. Suspect number one, age about 18, 5 feet 9, weight about 120. Hair brown, eyes brown. Hey, 
Sergeant, there goes that hold-up car. Are you sure? Yeah, 1930 Buick with those home to plate. Look at him go. Step on it. Wow. We're doing over 70, and he's walking away from us. I'll have to take a shot at his tires. Wow. That guy must be doing 90. I can't get any more out of this bus. Hey, they're shooting at us. Why for their tires again. If I hit him, I'll kill them all. Must be Barney Oldfield driving that car. We'll never catch him. Realizing that by now their car is hot, the three young bandits abandoned it at Lordsburg, New Mexico, and Hoppe Freight. Early the next evening, they rolled into Tucson, Arizona. Come on, guys, let's get over this rattler before the shack clears. What town's this? Oh, can't you read? Tucson, Arizona. Oh, this is where they came to Dillon, you ain't it? Yeah, that's right. Gee, we gotta be careful in this bird, then. Oh, uh, Dillinger was dumb. We let him get him. He wasn't on his toes. Well, we better not turn any tricks here. What do you want to do, Starve? Go to one of those charity camps for bums. Well, no, but... Oh, nuts. We're going to take a car out of this burg, and if you don't want to come along, you can stay here and rot. Well, sure, I'll go along, Judge. It ain't that. All right, then, stop it. Now, look, Otis. We'll pick up a car and get some dough from the driver. Yeah, but we only got a blackjack in the gas. Well? Well, you're using the gun, and Otis is using my blackjack. Now, I ain't got nothing. Okay, okay. Then you wait for us at the city limits to get kicking. Now, look, Otis. We'll find a stop sign when there ain't a lot of traffic, and then we'll... Tucson, the boys repeat the El Paso job with more profit. They take the driver of a Ford for $63 and dump him at the city limits, drive the car to Buckeye, Arizona, and abandon it. Otis and Suggs board a train to Los Angeles, and Jack Parker follows them by bus. Two days later, they are reunited in a cheap rooming house on Main Street. Well, boys, we're as clean as a hound's tooth. We've dropped the hot cars, we haven't been identified to amount to anything, and here we are in L.A. where the pickings are easy. Uh, before the week's out, we'll be rolling in dough and taking our chow with the movie stars. Yeah, but how about chowing right now? I'm hungry. Yeah, well, so am I, but I ain't got a cent. Neither have I. How much dough you got on your orders? A damn cent. A uh, cup of coffee and a donut for three. Nuts. Uh, don't worry, we'll eat. Where you going? Mooching. I'm better looking than you guys. The old ladies will take sympathy on me. <laughs> Tastes good. I'll say. I'm going to have one of those six pieces of pie, too. Gee, how'd you do it so quick, Otis? You was only gone a couple hours, and you came back with three bucks. Oh, it was easy. I just put on the poor young kid look and waltz up to some old hay bag and tell her I'm hungry. They just shell out. One of them wanted me to come home with her. Yeah? Sure. Said she'd make a home for me. I told her I'd like that, but I had to say goodbye to a friend of mine and I'd come out to her house tonight. You going? Oh, I should say not. What do I want to live in somebody's home for? I don't like home. That's the reason I left mine. Otis, watch your ears. Otis, mind the baby. Not me. I'm through with home life. Me too. Yeah, and that goes double for me. Oh, well, listen, I uh, I forgot to tell you that this pie I'm eating was donated by a copper. Yeah? How come? Well, I nicked a corner cop for ten cents. Told him I'd lost my car <laughs> fare. Oh, oh, boy, that's funny. Gee, I'd be afraid to do that. <laughs> yeah, sure you would. That's what's the matter with you, Jack, you chicken. Oh, no, I'm not, son. Oh, you ought to still be in Oklahoma. You ain't up to our speed, is he, Otis? I'll lay off the kid and you'll learn. Yeah, he'd better. Well, uh, what will our first job be, sub? Well, we ought to be able to steal a couple of cars. Oh, well, not in this town. These coppers here are tough. How about smashing purses? Oh, that's kid stuff. Let's get into big time. Well, take it easy at first. That's what I say, Sud. That's what you say. Listen, you don't know anything. You see, Sud, we got to get the lay of this place before we start any big stuff. Yeah. Well, maybe you're right. Sure I am. Now, we'll go out tonight and get ourselves a few pocketbooks. That'll feed us for a few days. Oh, I want to use my gas. Oh, take it easy, will you? You'll have plenty of time for that. That evening, the trio start out on a first-snatching expedition. At six from Vermont, 
Suggs and Otis leave Parker as lookout, while each take a side of the street and slowly walk down the street. As they approach New Hampshire Street, radio car 72 is slowly cruising along. Hey, Ellen. Notice those two kids? Uh, where? One on one side of the street and the other right across from it. Yeah, look kind of suspicious. Pull up and I'll talk to him. Hey there, buddy. Where are you going? Try on the other one, Ed. Come back here. Hold. Hold on fire. You got away. Uh, so did mine. They're up to no good. Got to keep our eyes open. Right. Calling car 72. Hey, there's a call. Calling 72 at Berendo on the 4th. A dog barking. A dog barking. Well, I guess we got to take it. Kelly hides his gun in the vacant lot at 3rd in Vermont, boards the streetcar, returns to the rooming house, borrows 25 cents from the clerk to establish a time alibi, and returns to get his gun and try to find Otis and Jack. It is midnight by the time Thug gets back to 6th in Vermont, and he finds no sign of his partner. And while Thug Kelly, dangerous, maladjusted youth, roams Los Angeles streets armed with a 45, we visit an apartment on New Hampshire Street. Oh, come on, Sam. Stick around for another little drink. No, you know I'd like to, Edie, but I can't. I gotta go. Why? Well, I borrowed a fellow's car to come over, and I gotta return it. He's going hunting tomorrow early. And gosh, that reminds me. He's got a new rifle in the back of the car. I hope nobody stole it. Oh, gee, honey. I thought you was gonna stay a while. Oh, come on, Sam. Stick around for a little while. We don't see you half often enough. Uh, not tonight. I just dropped in to say hello. Really, I gotta go. You, my friend, are a wet blanket. Yeah, and a cold shower, I suppose. That, too. Well, I'll be back, and then you'll see. I'll be waiting. Okay, and thanks for the drink, Edie. Okay, kiddo. Good night. Good night. Pick him up, bud. You heard me. I ain't got any Joe on me. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Keep your hands away from that car seat. Now you drop your gun. Pull a rifle on me, will you? Nothing. Quiet, Edie. Of course, boys. Come on in. May I introduce myself? I'm Joe Silkus of the Homicide Detail. This is my partner, Thad Brown. I'm pleased to meet you. What can we do for you? What about that shooting outside a half hour ago? What do you mean, what about it? What do you know about it? Nothing much. Stan came up for a drink. When did he leave? About five minutes to one. Next thing I knew, there was some shots. I heard them, too. I thought there was backfires. I had Edie. Yeah, I know. They always sound like backfires. And then I heard sirens and the police arrived. I see. Anything else? Nothing else. Who killed him? How should I know? Know him very well? Yeah, we've been out with him a couple of times. Why, at Edie. You girls willing to appear at the inquest tomorrow? What for? To identify the body of... What's all the fuss? Oh, I've been looking for you. Uh, this is my husband, Detective Silkus. Yeah, I imagine so. I want the girls down at the coroner's office in the morning. Did you see if they're there? How about it, Stella? We're clean. I'll have them there. Thanks. Let's go, Fred. Any angles there? Uh, I don't think so. Hey, there's Ellison coming across the street. Maybe he's got some. Oh, you find anything, Ellison? Yeah. And between those houses across the street, jumped the gate and tore a flat off of it. The other side were his heel marks. Military heels cut down. They had a mark on them like Hitler has. Oh, you mean a swastika? I don't know, but it's like the new German flag. Oh, I see. What else? It's about all, except and I forgot to tell you. I picked up a young kid by the name of Jack Parker, six in Vermont earlier this evening. Couldn't explain himself, so I booked him as a vagrant. The job may have been done by one of those two kids who got away. I see. Did you cover the tracks you found? I did? Good. I'll have Ray Pinker, the chemist, come out and take cast of the impressions. You saw him in the place, will you? Yes, sir. Thanks. Now, Fred, we want to talk to Parker. So you're 
Jack Parker, huh? That's right. How old are you? Seventeen. Pretty young to be in jail, aren't you? I ain't done nothing. No? No, I was standing in the section of Vermont when those coppers picked me up. I was waiting for a streetcar. Yeah? Where do you live? In Oklahoma. What are you doing here? Looking for work. Why aren't you home with your mother and father? Because my father's dead my mother's... Well, because I'd rather be here. What sort of a trip did you have from Oklahoma, Jack? Oh, pretty good. Have you got that new cutoff between Casa Grande and Gila Bend paid yet? I don't know. I came by way of Phoenix. Good road all the way. Yeah, those Arizona roads are getting better all the time. They sure are. Jack, who had the 45? Otis had it. That is, I, I mean... Who's Otis? I don't know. Now, listen, young fellow. We're in a pretty tight jam, and you'd better come clean. Then at there's no place for a kid like you. Who's Otis? Otis Bias. Who was with him? I, I can't tell you that. Why not? Because cause I'm afraid. Afraid of what? Uh, Suggs, I mean... Suggs who? Nobody. I, I didn't mean to say it. How about Otis? Where's he live? I don't know. Come on, where's he live? I don't know. Only he gets his mail at general delivery. I see. Where's he hang out? Around Pershing Square. Oh, I see. Around Pershing Square, huh? You come over there with us and point him out to us? Sure, I guess so. It'll help my spot any. I can't promise you a thing. But anything you do can't put you in a worse spot than you're in right now. So to Pershing Square go the strange trio of two policemen and the unfortunate youth. Across the fountain they sit, Brown and Tilkus watching Jack waiting for the signal which will tell him that Otis has appeared. Hours pass and nothing happens. Finally, Silkus goes impatient and walks over to Jack. Otis hasn't showed, huh? Not yet. Let's go over to his room, huh? I don't know where it is. Oh, yes, you do. You lived with him, didn't you? Well, yeah. Okay. Show us the way, then. All right. But I'm afraid of what Otis and Suggs will do to me. Don't worry. They won't get a chance. <laughs> Jack Parker, irresolute, swayed between the forces of fear and false allegiance, leads Silkus and Brown to the rooming house on Main Street. As they approach the door... Better be careful, they got guns. Don't worry, Jack. They won't have a chance to use them. Who's there? Tell him, Jack. It's me, Suggs. Jack. Well, where the devil have you been? Up with your hands, Suggs. First and bad. Okay. Oh, so you turned truly, eh, Jack? No, Suggs, it ain't that. No, bad. no, it doesn't look like it much. I knew you were kicking. Here's the forty-five, Joe. Well, I'm not surprised. Where's Otis, Suggs? I don't know. Step those two kids together, Thad, and take them in. I'll take out here for Otis. Okay. Why, are you cheap little... Come on, quit the rough stuff, or I'll pistol with you. Oh, I should have known better than to take this kid with me. Uh, you better go along quietly, or my partner will have to spank you. Yeah, says you, coppers. Oh, am I? I'll bet the babies drink gasoline where you come from. Yeah? Well, they'll cut you down to size where you're going. Take them away, Thad. Okay, Joe. Come on, kids. <laughs> Two hours, Silka staked out in the room, and then. I guess you're Otis, huh? Uh, well, what do you mean, Otis? Uh, who are you? Phil, of the uh, Homicide Squad. Oh, what, what's this all about? Murder. I, I don't know nothing about any murder. Yeah, we'll find out about that soon enough. Come along. <laughs> Three boys in custody, Detectives Daniels and E.G. Brown of Wilshire Station, gather evidence while Dokus and Brown send their attention on Sud Kelly. Well, Sud, how about it? How about what? You want to come clean? I ain't got nothing to come clean about. Now, listen, Sud, you're in a tight spot. It isn't going to hurt you any to talk. Yes, and I got nothing to talk about, I tell you. Look here. You know what this is? Well, it looks like a hunk of plaster to me. Yeah, it is, but it's more than that. It's an impression of a footprint. You notice the swath speaker here on the heel? Yeah? What about it? That's the same kind of mark that you have on your heel. Well, what of it? Lots of heels are alike. Yes, but this particular heel has been cut down to fit a Cuban heel. You notice how it's cut away on this side? Well, what of it? Look at your own foot and you have the answer. This is an impression of your footprint left by a fence as you escaped after the murder. Yeah, well, you can't prove that. We will, all right. And if that isn't enough to convince you, take a look at these. You know what they are? Well, they look like shells from a revolver. That's right. 
shells from your revolver, Sug. Yeah, how do you know? A ballistics man has determined that these shells found at the scene of the murder had come from the gun we found on you. Now, how about it? You mean... You mean you can prove these things in court? Yes, Suggs, we do. There ain't no way of beating the lawyers. No, Suggs, there isn't. You see, kids are caught. Now, how about it? Well... Well, I guess there's no use kidding you guys. I shot him. After hearing the case presented by Deputy District Attorney George Stallman, Wendell Doug Kelly changes his plea to guilty and throws himself upon the mercy of the court. Just two days ago, he faced Judge Walter J. Desmond. Wendell Kelly, before I pass sentence upon you, have you anything to say? No. In view of your plea of guilty, and in view of your youth, the court has decided to be lenient with you, Wendell Kelly, and I hereby sentence you to serve the rest of your natural life in San Quentin Penitentiary. of Jack Parker and Otis Bias for robberies and kidnapping in their territories. It is interesting to note that this trio of unfortunately maladjusted youths were in custody and their confessions obtained in five minutes less than 24 hours after they had committed their first job in Los Angeles, despite the fact that there were no clues but four empty shells at the actual scene of the crime. Thank you, Chief Davis. The Los Angeles Police Department now has 195 radio-equipped cars to answer emergency calls. And these cars use only Rio Grande cracked gasoline because they have found this gasoline to be faster, more powerful, and more economical. Other cities have made tests and found Rio Grande cracked gasoline gives superior service in all emergency engines. Now all police cars and fire engines in Oakland and Berkeley are powered exclusively by Rio Grande. The city of Merced has changed to Rio Grande. The city of Fresno now uses Rio Grande. Police and sheriff's cars in many cities and counties of Arizona use Rio Grande cracked gasoline. Wherever it is sold, Rio Grande cracked powers more police cars, fire engines, and other emergency equipment than any other gasoline. Calling all cars. Engine all cars. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Cancellation broadcast 79. Regarding murder. Suspects in this case now in custody. That is all. Smith.